ترى الذين احصروا في سبيل الله لا يستطيعون ضربا في الارض يحسبهم الجاهل اغنياء من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسالون الناس الحافا وما تنفقوا من خير فان الله به عليم الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran for the poor who are restricted in their traveling in Allah's path, who do not find a road in the earth, the ignorant might think them to be needless because they will not accept help. You see them and know them by their faces. They do not beg of people, but whatever you give of good, know that Allah is knowing of that. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising the truly poor who are ashamed to ask. And who, when we look at them, we might not think that they're poor at all. This is of their dignity. But Allah still urges us to give. Now that we have ended and sealed the fasting month of Ramadan, one of the last things that we are required to do is to pay the zakat al-fitr. And it is not much. And we might think, why this additional zakat? As well as the zakat al-mal, there is this additional small amount, five pounds or so. Why? The origins of this is to ensure that there is nobody on the day of Eid who goes hungry. And the gift has to be really in wheat or in barley, according to some of the ulama, dates, possibly cheese, basic foodstuffs, staples, the staff of life. This is important. Ramadan is a time when we give away our desires. And one of the things that we give is our wealth. And I want to reflect on this because in the context of today's world, our status as a generous ummah and Ramadan was the time when the Holy Prophet والسلام, was at his most generous. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان. That we are the ummah of givers. Alhamdulillah, even though we're not the wealthiest community in this country, statistically we give more per head than members of any other community. Alhamdulillah. This karam which is in the nobility of the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't care about the letters after our names. He doesn't care about our ancestors. He doesn't care about which class we're born into. He doesn't care about status. Huh? But he cares about real nobility. And this nobility in Arabic, karam, is linked to the idea of karim, which means generous. The generous person is the noble person, the one who transcends his own selfish desires and cares for others. In today's world, this is not working very well. Today's world is a world of immense disparities between rich and poor, haves, have-nots, people with status, people who are despised, people with the right passports, people with the wrong passports. Uh, it is an unequal age. Two centuries or more after the Enlightenment launched the slogan of liberty, equality, fraternity, never has the world been so unequal. The richest 1% of adults own 40% of the world's wealth. This is historically incredible. The three richest people in the world own more than the 50 poorest countries in the world all put together. This is extraordinary. In the US, Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates own more than the poorest half of the American population. So much for the American dream. According to Oxfam and other charities, COVID has made this even worse. The rich survive, they sit on their yachts, they watch their investments, They've got gold, they're sitting pretty. Oh, but what about the men 
who is driving a taxi and can't. Or the cleaner whose office is closed because everybody is working from home. Or the restaurant owner whose restaurant is closed. So many people who are a bit more marginal are really suffering and have been suffering. And as an ummah, very often we're towards the bottom of the economic hierarchy and we too, our people, are suffering. And we should look to those who are needy in our families, in our communities, in our neighbourhoods, to see who is too proud to ask for help, but who really needs help. And maybe that help can take the form of doing something for his business, giving him or her a break, helping them out. It doesn't have to be a handout. But in the month of Ramadan, the last act of which really before the Eid is the Zakat al-Fitr, we are reminded that we are an Ummah whose nobility comes about through generosity, through karam, through ikram. So, we are the Ummah that cares. And the Qur'an is constantly urging us to care. Some of the very earliest verses of the Holy Qur'an to be revealed are about the need to care. Quraysh too was divided between the super rich and the destitute, between Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, Abu Sufyan, Umayyab and Khalaf on the one hand, the oligarchs of Quraysh, and those who were sleeping, starving in the dust outside their front doors. And the Quran urges us to fight against that. This is part of the fight of the Holy Prophet وسلم, the one who says لَوْ كَانَ الْفَقْرُ رَجُلًا لَقَتَلْتُ SubhanAllah, very strong statement in this hadith. He says, were poverty to be a man, I would slay him. He himself chose poverty for himself. Because of his generosity and his supreme nobility, he was not concerned with dunya, he trusted in his Lord, but those who are in a state of compulsory poverty, who cannot feed their families, who are desperate, uh, the masakin, this makes him angry, alayhi salatu wasalam, and it is a sunnah to feel that anger. وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ دُولَةً بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ the relative, the orphans, the destitute, the traveling at travelers, give, distribute, so that the wealth may not circulate amongst the wealthy amongst you. Rich people doing deals with each other, and maybe a few crumbs fall from their table, but basically it's the rich who get richer, and the poor are destitute. So he was, sallallahu alayhi wa a man who cared for the poor, not just in theory, but in practice because he chose to live with the poor. He would not eat when his neighbour was hungry. This was impossible for him. The poet says, وَرَاوَدَتُّ الْجِبَالُ الشُّمُّ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ فَأَرَاهَا أَيَّمَا شَمَمِي وَأَكَّدَتْ زُهْدَهُ فِيهَا ضَرُورَتَهُ إِنَّ الضَّرُورَةَ لَا تَعْدُوا عَلَى الْعِصَمِي وَكَيْفَ تَدْعُوا إِلَى الدُّنْيَا ضَرُورَةُ مَنْ لَوْ لَاهُ لَمْ تَخْرُجِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْعَدَمِي محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم سبحان الله when we praise him we remember his poverty the poet says i have wronged the sunna of the one who spent his nights in prayer standing so that his feet complained from the swelling the one who tightened a flat stone above his belly fortunate black fortunate stone to be pressed against that skin. And the mountains themselves offered to turn to gold, to take him for himself, from himself, but he turned his back on them. And his doing without emphasized the necessity and the neediness that he was in, but even that extreme necessity can never take a righteous person away from righteousness. 
And how can necessity call to this world that person but for whom this world would not have come out of non-existence? Muhammad is the master of the two worlds and the two kinds, men and jinn, and the two types, Arabs and non-Arabs. This is his boast, a countercultural boast. Look at the billionaires who boast of their yachts and their duplexes in Monte Carlo and their banks account, bank accounts at Marek Fonseca and in Switzerland, boasting and boasting and boasting just about numbers. But he says, alayhi salatu wasalam, al-faqru fakhri, poverty is my pride. So we are to be the ummah of solidarity with the poor. In this messed up world, which tried communism to level this out, and that failed and was a nightmare. That tried socialism, that has fizzled out. That is now in the grip of this turbo capitalism that is crunching down upon the poor. And this is not even a political left or right position. The Sunnah position is the poor come first. Give and give and give. Whatever you think the government should be doing, give and give and give, because there will always be barakah in your giving.